Hello again, friends. We are hanging out with former Twins minor league pitcher Tom Hackamer. So get excited because this right here is Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Before I get to the intro, don't think I didn't see you dancing backstage there, Mr. Tom. But uh, it's, a very, it's a very fancy intro. I, it's I was not catchy, expecting that. Isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, hey, everyone, this is Locked On Twins back for another edition. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can follow me on Twitter, though I probably wouldn't, at Brandon underscore W A R N E, which you can see on my screen. You can also see my guest, which I will get to you, who I will get to, I should say, very quickly. But thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube and, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Also, feel free to be active in the comments. It's going to be less pertinent on a show with a guest, but when we're talking about the three starting pitchers who are free agents that I think the Twins should sign, maybe a little more interactive, same with trades. Those are the last two episodes, but today, before we get to the main event, Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, to not further belabor the point, our guest is Mr. Tom Hackamer, former Twins minor league pitcher, also some time with the Mets, some time in Indie Ball. We're going to cover all that ground, but before we get there, how are we doing, sir? Not too bad, honestly. Uh, overall things are good. The weather here in New York is hitting that nice, uh, sweet spot where you can wear a couple layers, but you're not freezing. So I'm pretty happy about that, honestly. So you're like a fall guy, like not a fall Huge. guy like Chris Carter, but no, no, like no, no, fall no. guy like, uh, flannels and pumpkin spice? Uh, flannels, yes. Pumpkin spice, not so much. But. They're not basic. Got it. Right on. Right. <laughs> uh, well, that, no, that, that's a good time of year here too. Um, we're in Minnesota. Uh, we got the colors. I actually just cut the grass for the last time. So I agree. I like this time of year. I like spring too. I don't like when spring pretends it's fall and fall pretends it's spring though, because that screws with you up top here. But when I used to interview players, when I first got started, and don't get me wrong, I'm not Barbara Walters here. I'm not whoever, but I used to start every interview. And I, I started with like guys like Ben Revere, like 10, 12 years ago. Who is Tom Hackamer? Now, I wouldn't ask them that because in 2011, they wouldn't have known that. But I'm asking you, who is Tom Hackamer? And then we're going to jump off from there. Uh, well, I am. I believe the reason I'm here is that I am a, a pitcher. Uh, I've, I've spent some time uh, in the various parts of Minnesota's minor league system, some parts of the Mets. Uh, outside of that, I have... Uh, during my my Tommy John recovery, I uh, I delved into really hard into content creation, sort of documenting my journey through that. Uh, that was an interesting thing to explore, uh, more of uh, my creative side. That was kind of fun to get into a little more. Uh, I find it really hard to do both of those things at the same time, be really competitive on the field, and also be taking the time to like pay attention and document things. It was nice to get a, a change of pace to get to play with that. I also play a couple instruments. That's uh, something that I, I like to bring up from time to time, uh, like some other notable Twins greats that I'm sure you've seen before me, like John <laughs> Curtis, uh, people of that nature. He can really sing, too, if I'm not mistaken. John's a very, very good guitar player. I would say I'd probably have him beat vocally. Hey, you guys could start something. Back in the day, Drew Butera, who retired a few years ago, lasted forever as a backup catcher because he was so good defensively. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he used to joke about a band that he had. Now, this is going to go back to like the 2011, 2010 rookies. So it was like him and Trevor Plouffe and a few other guys had just kind of screwed around coming up. And he might have been putting me on a little bit about how good they were, but they definitely, you know, screwed around with those kind of instruments. So I, I've definitely heard of guys having some talent. Curtis came up a little after those guys. Yeah. But um, yeah, I love to hear when what interests players have outside the game, too, because I think a lot of us forget you guys are humans at the core, just like the Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 especially uh, I, I've made the mistake of starting to, to tweet again. Don't do uh, it. Yeah, no, it's very stupid. Um, but it, it comes out pretty quickly that people sort of forget that the, the people they're watching on the field are 
people are just that. Well, and maybe you attract knuckle draggers because of how you throw. I, I'm just uh, well, birds of a feather. No, but I, your 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 new unique pitching motion. I watched uh, some of your YouTube videos, and uh, I, I love going inside baseball like that. Like Trevor May has a really. I mean, obviously now he's got his uh, interests are moving on to um, things outside of baseball specifically. Right. But I, it's always fun to watch the inside baseball stuff because it gives you a perspective that a filmmaker outside like if you were to hire a filmmaker to follow you versus you doing it yourself this is a totally different experience and I, I i think it's awesome absolutely phenomenal and i watched some of that while i was kind of watching some of the the highlight videos and and scouting stuff and the throwing motion like i have to ask how did that start for you because it's it's to say unconventional would be probably underselling it yeah uh so i was a, only a shortstop in high school i didn't pitch at all Okay. I was not particularly good. I was a good fielder. I had a good arm. I really couldn't hit. Um, so when it came time to to try to play in college, I was really looking for any opportunity I could get. And one of them that I really, the only one I got was uh, an uh, sort of informal, like walk-on offer from St. John's, which is a uh, school pretty close to where I'm from within a mile, basically, mm -hmm. of where I went to high school. Uh, where the coaches had seen me play uh, and they were like, you could come try to like walk on as an infielder, but we think you'd have a much better shot if you tried to pitch. And so I did. Um, fortunately, I, the part, part of what helped, I think, is they figured if I was bad, uh, I was relatively smart. I had a full academic scholarship to the school. They didn't have to give me money. I would keep the GPA up on the team, stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But to try to like get some use out of me, and because I was a middle infielder, threw from a lot of arm spots to begin with, as you just sort of naturally do, uh, basically immediately after I was like, okay, I'll come try to pitch, they were like, great, we want you to throw sidearm. Uh, and the genesis, that was the genesis of the whole thing. And uh, it turned out, I found out later that Ed Blankmeyer, the head coach there, who later was a, a coach in the Mets system, uh, had just basically seen me throwing across the infield as a shortstop and was just like ah this kid would actually probably be an okay sidearm pitcher and it turns out that he has the reputation in baseball that he does because he's good at those sorts of things if he was correct i was pretty good at it for at least a while at least in college i was well so i'm looking at the numbers not many strikeouts and you know a fair amount of walks how long did it take you in that first go round to really feel comfortable with uh I guess when you learn a new pitch, it takes a while to get it mound ready, right? Like you're you're going to screw with it in in bullpens and and that sort of thing. How long did it be, be for? Or how long was it for you before you felt mound ready with this new setup? Um, well, it was really. So you're referring to my freshman year, I'm assuming. Uh, well, uh, yeah, and and then yeah, like the, the second year, the numbers all spiked pretty yeah. well. I mean, the ERA went up, but your your peripheral numbers, I think, look better at least with strikeouts. Oh yeah, um, by, they're but, by far better. Yeah, when did that kind of click for you? Uh, I mean, the first year, like I d didn't know what I was doing at all. I could maybe throw a fastball. I threw like 81 miles an hour. Uh, I had no semblance of a an off speed pitch, uh, and I was still our closer. And I had eight saves that year, and so I was just like, oh, this is all right. This could work if I actually figure out what I'm doing. Uh, and over the next few years, I uh, I got a lot stronger. I you know learned to actually like repeat my motion. I toyed with some stuff to find where it felt good. I learned how to throw a slider, stuff like that. Um, I would say like midway through my sophomore year is probably where it started to click. And I was just like, oh, okay, I can kind of pitch now. Uh, and then my junior year was like a whole other level. And then my senior year after that was like each time, like each year basically was like, I felt completely as if the year before I had just had no idea what I was doing. And I was just like uncovering all these new layers of things. Was, was it in your opinion, like the fact that you kind of picked it up from scratch, uh, it's kind of like being the diamondbacks in the playoffs where the further you go, the more you surprise yourself that you've gotten there. And so you don't have as much like worry about what's next because you maybe didn't expect it in the first place. Was there some level of that? Like, um, once the ball got rolling, you're just like, all right, well, let's just see where this goes, uh, yeah. but with not as much pressure. Yeah, from my basically from my freshman year, it was just like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm basically playing with house money here. I shouldn't have even gotten to this point. Like anyone who saw me play baseball in high school is just like, that's not a Division One baseball player. Uh, but I was, and then <laughs> it, furthermore, it was just like uh, 
once I was in college and I, I was a notably better pitcher than I ever was a hitter. Uh, and I was throwing 88 to 90 miles an hour from my weird low arm slot. I was just like, okay, like I'm probably a, a professional at this point. Like someone will give me a shot. Uh, but up until that point, it was just like, yeah, we're absolutely playing with, with house money. And that's how I've tried to view sort of the whole thing. So I don't know how reliable the data is from college for you. Um, not because you went that long ago. I'm not trying to say that. Yeah. But um, baseball reference says you've given up six home runs. Is that accurate? And if so, how many of them can you remember? Uh, that's correct. And I remember all of them. I'm not surprised. Uh, what's the most notable one? I don't want to put you on the spot for, uh, you know, all six, but is there one that sticks out more than any? Um, I'm trying to run through them in my head here. First one was in Cedar Rapids my first year, just dick middle fastball to a guy named Gus Craig, who never played after that year, I don't think. By the way, that means zero in college. So their data is, is correct. In 150 correct. some I, innings, you did not give one up. I did not, no. That's awesome. Came very close. But uh, I let up two in 2019, I want to say. Or no, I let up one in 2019 to uh, yep. Trent Grisham. That ball okay. was murdered. He might have been uh, Trent Clark at that point. Yeah. Um, I let up three in 2021. That was rough. Uh, one <laughs> to a Pirates prospect that went, it, we were in Altoona. It was when I was with the Mets. Uh -huh. uh, we were in Altoona and he hit it through. There's a roller coaster in right field. I think he hit it off the roller coaster. That ball was murdered. Wait, in uh, Altoona? In Altoona, yeah. Oh, I would have guessed a roller coaster in like if New York, if any of your New York teams played on like a boardwalk or something. But um, well, again, sorry, no. not to, it, but, I never played for the Cyclones despite uh, my junior year of college. I was drafted by the Mets. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask you about that too. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Maybe I am blanking on some of these. I gave up one this year that was just like, it was my third outing back from TJ and it felt like. Like it was the first time I went out there and my body like felt good and I was pitching well and I was just like, all right. And then I just left the slider a little bit up to a righty and he just absolutely murdered it. Yeah, um, you're not expecting that right on. Oh, right I do place. I do remember the other two. One was two they were both in Syracuse when I was with the Mets. Okay. Uh, one was Connor Wong just pulled an up and in fastball as a righty, which is, that shouldn't be allowed. Catcher uh, catcher prospect, right? Yeah. Uh, Red um, Sox. Yeah, like I threw one up and in on him and he turned it over the right field wall. And another one was a slider that I threw like dead middle to uh, a really good hitter who was with the Blue Jays. I can't remember his name. Well, uh, either way, I mean, that's Tyler White. There we go. That's all of them. Tyler White, the guy who pitched or played in the big leagues briefly with like the Astros? Yes, that Tyler White. Okay. He was actually in the twin system this year for a little he bit. Was. Too, so I, I, do I, I, that. I yeah. thought I was remembering that. All right. Let's take a quick second. Um, just one real quick second to talk to, or rather about our friends over at FanDuel. All right. So our friends at FanDuel want you to know that October baseball is here and you can make your postseason debut with FanDuel America's number one sports book. It's just like making the debut in the postseason like Alex Kirilov did, except not quite. Uh, join FanDuel today and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to create your new account. And then you can get in on the action from the first pitch until the final out, betting on everything from strikeouts, home runs to who will win the game. And if you don't want to wait the whole game to get that W, you can do quick bets and predict what will happen in the next at bat. So head on over to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. Step up to the plate this postseason with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right. Man, I, do, I, do, I do remember the Kirilov postseason debut and being yeah, right? baffled. As... It just, yeah, it's uh, it, it was a... It was a decision, decision yeah. that was made. Yes, uh, that that is. Uh, you look at the record books and you're like, that is a thing that someone decided to one do. Of, one of the decisions of all time, right? And 2020, man, what a time! We'll talk about 2020 because that was also it, yeah. a pretty wild year, but um, <laughs> wild in more ways than one. So you played at St. John's. A couple of future big leaguers, Frank Schwindel and uh, Cody Stashek, if I'm not mistaken, were both on those yeah. teams. Did 
the fact that you and Cody Stashek both ended up with the twins, was it a in town to see you saw him or vice versa? Or were you both just kind of, Hey, we're both good relievers or good pitchers and whatnot. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, well, Stashek was drafted the year. Well, we were both drafted in 15, but uh, Stashek by the twins, me by the Mets. Yep. Uh, the twins drafted me the following year. I think that uh, just the, our, our area scout, John Wilson was, is just mm-hmm. very well respected in the organization and, his opinions are taken into account. And I think that's uh, how we both ended up there. Well, I know almost nothing. And John, uh, you said John Wilson, correct? Yeah. Um, he's, he's one of the scouts that I know of, like is, is more prominent when you see, we get the emails with the draft picks and it says who they were recommended by. And John Wilson yeah. appears a ton. So um, it's, um, it's not surprising that he would carry that kind of weight. Uh, and then yes, Frank Schwindel played some for the Cubs. Um, I want to get down to though, uh, your summer league experience in 2015, you played for the Brewster Whitecaps in the Cape Cod league, Cape Cod, kind of a rite of passage for some guys as far as like, um, you know, it's just, it's, I feel like we almost romanticize it like a summer on the Cape, but in baseball terms, well, they, what did, was it they like? did make that whole movie about it. Yeah. I'm not good with baseball movies. So it's summer caps. This. Oh, uh, God. Duh. Or, yeah. But I mean, so you you were on the on the Cape and had just an incredible summer. Um, can you walk us through like how the Cape comes together for you? And then, I mean, you gave up what one earned run the entire summer. Uh, you must like have that. just felt on yeah. top of the world, like zero four seven ERA, incredible. Yeah, I, uh, I I can't tell you a time that I really felt like I was pitching better than that. I don't think. Um, it's, I, I finished up my junior year. I was, uh, I got drafted by the Mets and it was the sort of the choice between signing uh, for what they offered me versus doing this whole sort of like bet on myself, go back to school thing. And part of what did go into that decision is like, I had come this far and like, I had the opportunity to go play in Cape Cod. And I was like, that'd be really cool. Like if I do nothing mm-hmm. else in baseball, like I can say that I did this at least uh, have one of the cool, like very cool experiences that like I rightfully should never have had based on the quality of baseball player that I was. Uh, and that certainly factored in. So I went and did that. Uh, and the, I think it's much cooler that they moved the signing date or the draft back actually. So guys have the opportunity to do that and still get drafted. Right. Uh, right. I think that that was a really good decision. Uh, but yeah, I, I ended up up there. I was throwing incredibly well and the, uh, ended up the, uh, signing date used to be like mid July. I don't know what it is now, but ended up not signing with the Mets finishing out the year. I was co-reliever of the year. And uh, I, I truly don't think I've ever, that might be the best that I've ever felt. Like every time I went out on the mound, just having like no doubt that I was going to get whoever came up out. Is that a good measuring stick for you at that point? Because, you know, I don't, for, for St. John's, you're facing very specific schools, but you know, you play with a guy like Brent Rooker, who's playing in the sec, you know, he's on your team. You only played a handful of games that year, but, um, that must be a nice like next step measuring stick of like, okay, what am I capable against this competition? Right. Yeah. It was really nice to have that. Like, okay, this isn't just like beating up on like the, you know, the worst teams in the big East. Right. Uh, it was good to be like, I, you know, I faced one hitter that sticks out that I remember was Tommy Edmond. Uh, yep. He was in there that year. Uh, with Stanford very good hitters on our team. Yeah. Um, so it was really good to like, know for sure. Like, okay, like I can compete with these guys. Like, so you go back and you get taken in the fourth round, but I, I assume as a senior sign, is it more about the opportunity than it is actually like the Mets didn't offer you enough money? Cause the way you explain it, it's more like, well, you guys Mets, have an experience. It, it was a combination of both things. It was like, okay, okay, I, okay. I wanted to go back to school. I wanted to play in the Cape. Uh, also the Mets, like the Mets did not offer me enough money to, get me to forego those things. I mean, they'd have to buy out basically that last year of your education since you were on a academic scholarship. Right. I mean, in theory, yeah. right. Uh, and it ended up, it ended up working out better for me on the whole anyway, 
Uh, okay, because, well, that's good. As as is a public record, if you want to look it up, the Twins paid me notably more than uh, what the Mets had offered me. Okay, well, then, yeah, obviously it worked out great. And that last year yeah. at St. John's was incredible. Um, I do want to skip over it, though, because you go to Cedar Rapids right yeah. out of the chute. Yep. Um, what's that like? Like, you go from New York to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Yeah, it was uh, – I had a quick – I actually went – so the whole process was I went from, I live in New York. I mm-hmm. went to Minneapolis to meet Terry Ryan at the time and sign my contract, Legend. see some doctors. I love Terry. I love Terry. I don't know. Maybe you have different feelings, but I love Terry. I, I don't like that Terry got fired right after I got drafted. I think that worked against me a little bit. Got but, it. Got it. Um, he was fine. Uh, I had some issues with the the doctors in Minnesota having some, taking some issues with my knee MRI. Uh, got from, it. Minneapolis, I go to Fort Myers for a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, yep. And then from Fort Myers, I go to Cedar Rapids. So I go That's through this, pro- this progression of just things that are getting slowly, like further and further from what my idea of a city is. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm from what I consider one of the best cities in the world. Minneapolis sure. is lovely, but it's much different. Uh, in New York, yep. we do not have to have a series of tunnels and walkways to make sure you don't ever have to go outside Uh, because it doesn't quite get that cold here. (laughs) Uh, Then to Fort Myers, which is just like, you know, uh, the suburban New Yorkers dream. Yeah, not a metropolis, but it's nice. It's warm. Yeah, it's there's sort of some stuff. There's a downtown and then Cedar Rapids. It's like I'm driving through 15 miles of cornfields from my host family's house uh, and living with an Australian. Uh, And it's just a very uh, quick rapid culture shock from what i was what i was used to so that had to be that that was lachlan wells that was lachlan wells was, yeah okay yeah i i kind of assumed so i knew you in the uh, in lewis thorpe probably didn't line up but um it, i played with funny. lewis a little bit but 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 not at this point that was a little no. early for you um that first cedar rapids team how much did it help you to be with cody stashek like did you guys have a relationship before or was it more getting to know him a little better because it was a longer stretch of time uh, I mean, I knew uh, Cody is a pretty stays to himself kind of guy. He's a very nice yeah, person. Real buttoned uh, up. Yeah, he's a very, uh, very lone wolf kind of guy. Great guy. Mm-hmm. It was great to know somebody when I got there, and he was very, uh, it was very good to have that. He was very welcoming and helped me out a lot. Uh, yeah, I think otherwise, if I was just thrown into that situation, it would have been uh, a good bit tougher. No, yeah, no question about it. Um, and, you know, a fair amount of uh, big league future talent on that team. I mean, and Jake Maurer, the manager, you're certainly getting some Minnesota Twins royalty there. Yeah. Um, but uh, the one guy I want to ask you about is Nick Anderson because it never never reached the big leagues with the Twins. He obviously had some off-the-field stuff. He's a Minnesota kid. Um, when you watched him back then, he's 25 at Cedar Rapids, so like – that's excessively old for that level. Are you looking at him as a guy like, I still think he's got a shot? Because the numbers jump off the page. They're so nasty. Here's the thing is I never played with Nick Anderson. Oh, you were on the roster, but at opposite times of the year then. We Yeah, not- we never actually. It was always, for a couple of years, it was he got moved up and I got moved up right behind him. <laughs> uh, so like whatever spot he vacated was the one that I went into. Uh, is, similar numbers, probably different approach, I suppose. So he, uh, yeah, different, you know, slightly different, that. slightly different arm actions. Well, that's one way to keep teams guessing. Um, you also played with Lamont Wade Jr. Uh, at least he was on the team, I guess. I, uh, I, I did. First, I played with Lamont. Uh, and then what about Fernando Romero? Did you play with Fernando Romero? I. Mm, you must have just missed him then. I think I just missed Romero a couple times too. Yeah, These were all, I, it was all like guys I was mostly around in spring training, and I knew them from that. Yeah. But I never like yeah. got to. I like Lamont was with us rehabbing one time uh, uh-huh. when I was in Pensacola. Um, I don't think I ever played with Romero. No, it, you were in the same level, but at different times. I yeah, I didn't take into consideration that you, when you would have signed, there would have been half a season already done. Um, I want to ask you about the AFL. Uh, how would you compare that to the Cape as far as like? you play good and then you go somewhere as kind of a showcase. Is it a similar concept or is it completely different? Uh, I would say same idea. Like it was super cool to get to like, just go out on field in a full like big league uniform, basically. 
Yeah. Uh, I think that I personally, I think that's the most fun thing about the fall league is it kind of feels like you're playing in an all-star game every day because everyone's out there in their, their organization's uniform. I think whenever they did away with that, that was super, super lame. And I think they brought it back. So it's good again, but <laughs> uh, I want to ask you one more thing about the fall league before uh, we move forward. But yeah. um, Andrew, Andrew Vasquez was on your team. Yeah. Um, is he as scary as he looks? Like, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but the <laughs> first time I met him, I was like, I, I don't think I'm ever going to talk to this guy. He looks like a villain from pro wrestling in like 1996 that everybody is terrified of. Is that? Yeah, that is absolutely, that's absolutely how he's built. He's just like yeah. a very, very goofy, like very nice guy. Awesome, awesome <laughs> person. I had the, I was roommates with him a couple times. We lived together in, uh, during COVID, actually, and then spring training yeah. in 2021. Uh, just an absolutely great person. He's very approachable. He's very well spoken. Uh, he's a really nice guy, actually. Uh, I gotta ask, are we okay on time? I've kept you a little longer than I was hoping for these first two oh, segments. Oh, you're you're you're, still you're good. I got nothing to All do. Right. We'll as take a quick. Good. Let's take a quick pause and talk about our friends at Bird Dogs, and then we'll come down the home stretch here. All right, so our friends at Bird Dogs want you to know that uh, Bird Dogs make you look good. It's shorts, and I got some pants from there, but it's it's mostly khaki-type shorts. They fit thin through your thighs and, leg and legs and your backside. They gave me uh, definition in my legs where there is none, so highly recommended. Um, they do exactly the same thing as Lululemon, but better. They fit better. They're not that strict, stiff, restricting cotton, easy for me to say, that you're used to with other gym shorts. And they fixed the issue of the shorts like that by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches to get a slimmer fit. And you don't have to sacrifice any movement. You can wear these golfing. You can wear, I wear them to church. I wear them when I'm going to play with my kids outside. Pretty much any situation, going to the pool, going to the gym. And they use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. That's the promo code again, locked on MLB at checkout if you don't use the uh, the website there. Uh, but locked on MLB at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. And you'll get a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. And I can attest to that as well. All right, coming down the home stretch here, the seventh inning stretch, our final segment of this episode with Tom Hackamer. Uh, Tom, I want to ask you about 2020. Uh, well, I should I should first say 2018 things went, uh, they started to go sideways for you a bit, um, command and all that. What, what was the vibe there? I, 2018 was a weird year for the organization. Um, everything in the big leagues kind of took a step back. Um what happened for you though that that made it a difficult season? Uh, I was just, I, it was actually a really cool year for me starting off because I was brought in early to uh, back up big league spring training games. So oh, I nice. was like I was in there from the beginning. I was traveling around. I got to back up. Uh, I got to go on the exhibition trip up to Washington D.C. Mm. Uh, that was super cool. We got we stayed in two big league hotels. Uh, still, two the nicest hotels I'll probably ever stay in. Uh, but the issue with that was that I had come straight from the fall league and I had then come in early. So I had virtually no time off. My shoulder yeah. was just completely, completely cooked. Uh, and I was dealing with shoulder problems basically for the entire year. I was hurt to start the year. Yeah. Uh, I got panicked that I was like missing time and like falling behind, which is not, not a good thing to be feeling and not a good way to deal with an injury. Uh, so I tried to rush myself back and I was throwing through pain and my velo was down. My stuff was worse. My command was worse, uh, which is not a good combination of things. Uh, I ended up going back on the injured list to finish the year uh, and ended up needing shoulder surgery after that year. So overall, definitely not a good year considering how kind of cool it was the way it started out. Uh, some, some poor decisions on my part certainly played into that. Uh, if you're, uh, something that my my father said to me many times he was like if you're hurt don't play and if you play then you're not hurt yeah it sounds like zero out of ten would not recommend um, yeah exactly uh how hard is it to know the balance of pitching when 
um, you're feeling something versus pitching when hurt. Um, yeah. You, if we're fair, you were also late to the pitching game. So I don't know how much that changes your your thought process too. You know, you you weren't pitching as much as some of the kids who, uh, you know, are now your age. It, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but but it, it how hard been, is that balance? I had been a pitcher for five full years basically before that. Um, yeah. It's the the cutoff is really like if you go out there and it still hurts, you're probably injured. Like it's probably right. something significant. Like every time I went to throw a pitch, I was like scared of how much it was going to hurt when my arm laid back, like how much it was going to hurt just in the front of my shoulder. Uh, and it's not a very good way to pitch. So I had to try to like psych myself up uh, to like get through it. And it's just not uh, a sustainable way to do that. So basically, if the adrenaline chases the discomfort, you're probably okay. Or is that what, yeah, or like as you loosen up, if it's okay, um, if it happens, like if you go out on the mound a couple times in a row and it's like legitimately painful to try to deliver however many pitches you need to to get out of an inning, it's not a good sign, and you should probably get it looked at at least. So you come back in 2019. You have a nice year, uh, more than make up in uh, in Fort Myers numbers wise, and then good in Pensacola too. Um, and then there's the 2020 pandemics, no season. Uh, to what extent, like, obviously, we don't want to talk about COVID as this reason. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that. But, like, how much did the 2020 minor league hiatus affect the trajectory of your career, in your opinion? I think it's certainly not insignificant. Um, yeah, I think that's that, a fair. I think the, combina comp the combination of things that happened beforehand, spending 2018 hurt, um, yep. but like if I had just been hurt, it would have been okay. If I was, I was trying to throw well hurt and being bad set me back, mm -hmm. uh, 22 or 19, I was good, uh, back from the surgery. Fine. I came in for 2020 spring training early to go to command camp. Cause I had had command issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was good. I was about to like start getting into games and hopefully going over to back up some games on the big league side again, um, hopefully throwing some of those. And that was right about when we got shut down. I think that, uh, and I ended up just sort of staying in Fort Myers for that year because it, I, you know, I figured that Florida would be a lot more open and able for me to like stay ready and be able to train than it would be home in New York. And I was correct. Yeah. Of uh, course. It's, so spent that year living with uh, Andrew Vasquez and Tyler Wells Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, good dudes. Great. Uh, it was a, a weird time, certainly, but I think that it was obviously a, a detriment to to my career, obviously not playing for an entire year where I would have been probably in double, triple A. Yeah. Uh, a little bit younger, a little bit uh, closer to having just had a good season, having some confidence. Uh, and like one of the good things that happened after COVID is – there was, was suddenly a lot less uh, – everyone was – all, all, all the teams were a lot more willing to, like, just promote their younger guys quicker. Just mm -hmm. like, okay, like, we took this guy out of college in a high round. Like, we don't need to see him play, you know, five months in low A. Just like, okay, right. he's good there for six weeks. Get him moving. Uh, and that's a really good thing for baseball. It's just really unfortunate for me personally that it happened once I was already in my mid-20s. Uh, and I no longer fit that mold. Yeah, I would say that's uh, that I like that explanation. I don't like the result, obviously, but I like yeah. the explanation because it's not a way I would have necessarily thought of it. Um, you're not long for the Twins organization at 21. It looks like about June things yeah. uh, dissipate there. What, were you dealing with something physical at the time that eventually came to a head with the Mets because you were with the Mets then after that? Or, uh, you know, kind of what was that whole 2021 vibe? Because, um, like I said, twins were not long in your I really, I really wish I knew uh, because it was really, uh, it was really, really difficult because yeah. spring training, I was there again to, to throw in some spring training games that year. Another, like, very strange year. I threw very well uh, in the games I got into, I felt I – through really well and pretty much everything else I did. And it was coming to a point where my command was pretty much as good as it had ever been. Uh, and I kind of thought that I had figured something out or like turned a corner on it. Uh, I go to the alternate site in St. Paul 
continued to throw incredibly well for the entire time I was there. That is where I let up actually uh, a, a home run that is not on the record to Ben Rourke that uh, he absolutely, he launched a ball out of the stadium off me. That but, dude's so jacked. Yeah, I love Ben. He's a great guy. He's I'm really so happy that he finally got to like, he finally got healthy and was actually playing this year. Right. Um, but like I was throw apart from that, I was throwing tremendously well the entire time. Uh, I get sent down to um, Wichita. Yep. Uh, Kansas is lovely in May, if you were ever wondering. But I, I wasn't, weeks, but I, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I, I threw two weeks there. It was actually Wichita was actually better than I expected. I threw pretty well, and then I went back up to St. Paul, and I think that again I sort of let my uh, in, in a similar way to 2018 when I was throwing through an injury, I just kind of let my my brain get in the way of me looking at things clearly, and I was just like, I like need to like throw well. I need to get mm -hmm. to the big leagues. I'm too old to like be this far behind. And like, it's weirder to look back and think that that's how I was thinking when I was still like, I'm still trying to play currently. Yeah. Uh, and I'm notably older than I was then. Uh, I, I, just put, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, it keeps going. Apparently I just put, I put a lot of pressure on myself and I was not helping my ability to perform. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, if you look at my numbers from St. Paul, they're really, really bad. I walked 15 guys in five innings. Uh, but on the other hand, like my stuff had just like jumped and was the best that it had ever been. It was yeah. a really weird thing that I just couldn't explain and couldn't control. Uh, and after a game where I think I walked six guys and recorded two outs, uh, the Twins released me, as uh, is pretty understandable. Uh, I was fortunate to to hook on with the Mets after that, but uh, it was it was a really difficult uh, thing going through it. I don't know how much of it it had to do with the eventual injury I would deal with, but okay, because there's no way of knowing. Like I right. think that my my UCL might have been loosening for years, but I have no way to prove that that is what was happening. And I know for a fact that now it's much tighter than it was at any point in my probably twins career. Yeah. And it, when I was just in indie ball, I was still walking a lot of guys. So I don't actually know what the, how much that was contributing apart from, or like compared to like my mental state where I yeah, was trying to put way sure. too much pressure on myself to perform, I, which one of I those think, was doing more. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's all interrelated. I think that's how brilliant the, uh, the brain is that you're not even realizing things are affecting your, your mental state and, and that sort of thing. Um, the Mets come up a lot in different parts of your story. How much of those are interrelated? You know, like the, the, didn't you say with St. John's, there was a Mets factor with uh, someone who went on to scout for them or, and then you got the Mets drafting you, but you didn't sign. And now you go back to the Mets uh, after the yeah. twins. Is that all interconnected or is it just kind of how baseball I mean, goes sometimes? A, a little bit. It was, uh, so my head coach at St. John's, Ed Blankmeyer, went on to be a coordinator slash coach with the Mets later. That's it. Yeah. That's and that, the one that, was, that was why I signed there. I had, yep. it was between them and the Nationals. And to be honest, I probably made the wrong choice because uh, the Nationals in the second half of 2021 just sold their entire team. Yep. Uh, so maybe not my best move, but that's life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was definitely, learn, right? I was definitely, uh, it seemed correct at the time. I only know that now that it was maybe the wrong choice, but I, uh, I, I went somewhere where there was somebody that I knew, uh, because so I knew I'd have somebody in my corner, uh, a lot more people from the Mets reached out to me, uh, mm -hmm. probably because of that, but it was, uh, it was good. It was really, uh, it felt nice to like come full circle on that and like come to play for the team whose stadium is a couple miles from where I went to college. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I, I thought it was a good idea. It maybe wasn't, it maybe was, I'll never know. I had a lot of fun doing it. It was really cool just to, to play for those teams uh, and have that opportunity. And they're like people that I know, uh, were all very supportive and thought it was very cool that I had even the opportunity to get up to the Mets. What? So you land with the Long Island Ducks. I don't want to take mm -hmm. any steam from your recovery 
from surgery because your YouTube channel covers that way better than I can ever try to do. And I, I want to have you push that before we get out of here because I watched some of it. It's, it's incredible. I, I really thought it was great. But Long Island, to me, the Long Island Ducks are kind of the team I think of when I think of like independent ball. Granted, the St. Paul Saints are here. They were the local independent team around here before they affiliated with the Twins. Um, right. But when I think of indie ball, I think of the Ducks. It seems to be a big landing spot for former big leaguers. And two questions. One, what is the primary difference between playing in the minors and indie ball, like affiliated versus unaffiliated? And then two, what is it like being in the clubhouse where there's that many guys who have played in the big leagues at any given moment? Uh, so those two questions are kind of related because one of the big okay. differences is that like, like guys in triple a, oh, uh, triple a is a little different guys in double a and down, like guys are generally hustling balls out, like yep. giving it a lot, like triple a, you get some of the salty vets who are like, you know, ground out and, you know, run a seven out at first base. Oof. Uh, Yep. Trip or uh, playing indie ball, especially with the Ducks. Like we had, like I played with Wilson Ramos, which is an absurd thing that I get to say. Yeah. Uh, but he would like he would ground up to short, and like the shortstop could have run the ball to first because he <laughs> like he played twelve years in the big leagues. He doesn't care. Like he doesn't yeah. care if he runs out this ball for the Long Island Ducks. Uh, <laughs> so like that, like from that perspective, it was incredible. Uh, I got to play with. Uh, really interesting assortment of guys like i was on the same team as al albuquerque and alejandro de Aza, uh Ruben Tejada, a bunch of the ducks are really big on getting you, former mets guys so it's if really you, interesting there if you want i'll just take a second and can i read every player that was on the team this year that played in the big leagues yeah go for it alejandro de Aza, alex dickerson lou ford former lou twin ford. brian goodwin uh denny heck of lynn Kyle Lobstein, Daniel Murphy, Boog Powell, Wilson Ramos, Hector Sanchez, Chance Cisco, Ruben Tejada, Sam Travis, Al Albuquerque, Jake Fishman, Mirandi Gonzalez, Brett Kennedy, Kevin Quackenbush, uh, Robert Stock. Boy, that team had really good Twitter uh, presence. Oh, yeah. Um, Stephen Tarpley and Jimmy Yakabonis. Now, I'm not going to let you out before I ask you one other question, but what an incredible amount of talent, former big league talent on a team that – like you said, it's probably more fun than anything for fans to come out and watch. Yeah. It's like, uh, unbelievable. It's not a, it's a, yeah, it's got to be just a, like a, a circus to watch and not in a negative sense. Like just no, an incredible display. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's unfortunate because like you can very clearly tell that some guys are like, you can see why they're there and not uh, like not playing in AAA for somebody. Like it's, un it's really unfortunate, but like Ruben has very clearly – never recovered since Daniel or um, Chase, Chase, Utley. Utley, Chase Utley broke his leg. Uh, I suppose it's, it's a matter of talent matching uh, effort. Like Wilson Ramos is still talented. And if his effort came up, his numbers might be a little better, but it wouldn't be enough to get back to the big leagues. Right. And you can see the difference between talent and effort. Yes, absolutely. Which isn't but, to say that they're not trying. I, I don't want to be no, very but careful. it's also it's also one of those things where like watching that, I'm like, yeah, I get it, man. Like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand why you don't want to run this ball out, and I don't blame you for that. <laughs> so, I have to end with this one. You had a hit this year. I did. Yeah, that was my first. Uh, so there was a rule in the Atlantic League for those that don't know. Uh, the Atlantic League is sort of the testing ground for new rules that MLB might. Uh, put in at some point, although they think they've run through most of the good ones. Like that's where they first tested the automatic strike zone and the pitch clock and stuff like that. Uh, they've run through all of the good ones. And so now we're doing weird stuff to just justify the partnership with the league. I think but, that's why they signed you in the first place. Yeah, exactly. They're like, yeah, hey, what's wrong with this guy? See everyone okay. gets a, everyone gets a crack at Mr. Uh, Hackamer. Yeah. Everyone gets a weird guy. Um, but so one of the rules this year is called the double hook. So if you pull the starting pitcher before he gets through five innings, you also lose the designated hitter, which is a really interesting thought. It's just that also they're never going to do that in the big leagues because I don't think it benefits anybody. No, it's, it's cool, but also kind of dumb. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it makes, you know, it's fun for the Atlantic league or whatever, but yeah. it would. Uh, so what happened, we had a, a a couple different things going on. One of them was that uh, Ruben Tejada actually was dealing with visa issues, so he just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Another guy was hurt, 
but not on the injured list. So still taking up a roster spot. Uh, I think it was okay. Sam Travis. Oh yeah. Uh, and so we had like one bench player and it might've legitimately been Lou Ford because he was, <laughs> he's a player coach. Uh, so I came in, I threw the seventh inning or whatever. And the pitcher's spot was leading off the next inning. Our, our starter had not gotten through five innings. We pulled him before that. Uh, so I walked back, you know, I have a good, it was my first back to back actually since surgery. So that was exciting. Uh, I miss, that was one of the biggest things. Uh, and one of the things that when I was with the twins after 2017, they stopped doing it in the minors basically because they wanted guys to be able to go multiple innings, but that's just never been my strong suit. My strong suit is I can throw three days in a row if you need me to. But in any at a time. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so I was excited because of that. I'm walking off the mound and while he's waiting for me on the top step of the dugout, which he, he doesn't do. Like when I, when pitchers come out of games, like he is just like sitting there. I, I talked to Wally like three or four times the whole year prior to that. And I'm just like, is he congratulating me? Like what? He goes, you're up first. I was like, Oh shit. Like I have to go like, uh, <laughs> I have to find someone's bat that they don't mind if I break. Yeah. Um, so I, I borrow somebody's stuff. I go up to bat. The guy pitching against me was one of my summer ball teammates from my uh, the year before I was in the Cape. I was playing in okay. the perfect game league in upstate New York. Sure. Uh, so I get up there. This guy, I know this guy throws like 95 to 97. So I get up there. I'm like, hey, Clark, like, take it easy on me, please. Uh, there was the first pitch in the dirt. Uh, I went back and watched the video. And like, I am still like loading my swing. Like my front foot is in the air in a stride as the ball hits the dirt behind me. Cause I, I was like, I didn't get to like get out there and try to like time it up in the on deck circle. So right. I second pitch, I was just like, all right, he's probably going to lay one in here. And then like, I see the pitch coming and before I know it, like I'm swinging, uh, like it was not a conscious decision. I don't know if that's how hitting works for guys who are good at it, but maybe, uh, I was surprised that I was swinging the bat. I was even more surprised when I felt the bat hit the ball. And then I like realized I have to start running. I like let the gut bat go before I'm done swinging. So it flies around and hits the catcher in the head. Uh, <laughs> I, I apologized. He understood that it's not something I do. And I see the ball just rolling through the six hole. And I was just like, Oh, <laughs> no way. I'm rounding first, like calling for the ball. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, oh I still have it. It's actually right behind me. <laughs> That's freaking outstanding. Oh, outstanding. Yeah. And it goes to show just how small the baseball community is that it you is. faced a guy that you knew. Uh, yeah, at some point he, uh, he, he texted me after the game and he was just like, I have been, I've been waiting with this rule to face a pitcher all year. And that was the first time this happened. And that was my nightmare. He got so, out of the inning. He was fine. You didn't, uh, yeah. You didn't come around to score. You didn't steal a base or anything. No, I did think about it, and one of my uh, one of the guys in the bullpen, like I took like a like as he lifted his leg, I like took a couple shuffles, like I was going to take off. Uh, one of the guys in the bullpen was like, "Yeah, what are you doing? What are you thinking of?" Uh, I did Nothing. Get to, I got to I got to second on a uh, Wilson Ramos swinging bunt, and I will say, watching someone pitch from second base is probably about as cool as it gets. I believe it. I think that that's one of the coolest views you can have on a baseball field. Yep. Well, hey, I want to give you a chance to push your Twitter account if you want, uh, your your content, and then how you feeling. I mean, it's going to be time for teams to start looking here. Hopefully, we can. Uh, hopefully, you can land someplace. Uh, yeah, that would be great. If you do want to follow me on social media, I made it very easy. I came up with something kind of clever when I was like 17 and I've used it for all my social media since it's all hack attackamer. Uh, if you want to follow me on YouTube, I did actually change the name of that. I think it's just called baseball things of that nature. It is. Uh, I checked. Yep, yeah. Cause I, I love the uh, things of that nature. Yeah, exactly. Genre uh, of joke. Exactly. Um, so. I, I have most of the series of my uh, recovery from Tommy John surgery. Uh, I've been meaning to, I realize it's really, really difficult to, uh, as I was saying before, like try to like document things while you're actually playing. It's mm -hmm. way easier when you're just like working out and like doing a throwing program. I'm sure. Uh, so I'm working on doing the actual finishing video of that about getting back to playing. So mm -hmm. if you want to see when I actually finish that, follow me on YouTube. Uh, but overall, I'm just looking forward to 
either in, in a very weird and sort of morbid way because I've decided that I'm not playing uh, independent ball again. It was a fun experience for a couple months, and that was all of it that I needed. Yep. Uh, if I have an opportunity to play affiliated baseball again, I'll keep going. And if not, I think I'll probably move on to whatever it is that is next for me. But I also, I also finished the year, my last outing with the Ducks, I threw the five hardest fastballs of my life. So it would be really, really sort of bittersweet to have to end on that note. Well, you're supposed to always end the round on a good one, whether it's batting practice, shooting basketballs, whatever. So, yeah. uh, but hey, let's hope that ending a good one is uh, still a few years in the future for you. Thank you so much for taking time out. We look forward to getting you hired. Hashtag hire Tom. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, thank you so much for hanging out with us, guys. Uh, we'll be back again later in the week. We got all kinds of offseason stuff to talk about. But until next time, this is Locked on Twins. Dude, thank